Looks like someone's been doing their homework. Agile teams, Andy's emotional intelligence, someone's ready to take their team to the next level. It's really interesting how much people focus on the tools and processes of Agile right. and kind of forget that at the end of the day, yeah. it all comes down to people. Absolutely. And we're not just talking about being nice here, right? right. We're talking about emotional intelligence yeah. or EI, as the cool kids call it. Uh -huh. This is about a set of skills that can actually help you communicate better, manage stress, right. and even navigate those uh, those tricky team conflicts that always seem to come up. And imagine having that in the fast-paced world of Agile. Exactly. It's like when you think of Agile as this system that's constantly changing and adapting, right. EI is like the oil that keeps the whole thing running smoothly. I love that. You know, we talk about the core values of Agile. Yeah. Focus, courage, commitment, respect, openness. Right. EI actually amplifies each one of them. Oh, okay. Now I'm really interested. So give me an example. How does EI boost, let's say, courage in an agile team? Well, let's say you have to give some constructive feedback to a yeah. teammate, maybe on something they could improve in their code. Okay. That takes courage, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. With high EI, you can deliver that feedback in a way that's honest and direct, but also empathetic. Okay. So you're focused on the behavior not the person. Mm -hmm. And that makes a huge difference. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's not just what you say, yeah. but it's how you say it. Exactly. And really understanding how the other person is going to receive that message. Yes. Okay, so let's break it down. Okay. What exactly IS emotional intelligence? Well, it's about understanding and managing emotions. Okay. Both your own and the emotions of other people. All right. So it's being self-aware knowing how your emotions influence your actions right. and having the ability to kind of keep those emotions in check especially when things get tough. So there's like a strategic element to this. Oh, absolutely. It's not just about like, you know, touchy-feely stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's about being strategic. Exactly. Okay. It's about how you interact with others. Imagine you're in like a really heated sprint planning session. Oh yeah, I've been there. And someone on the team gets defensive, you know, the tension is rising, you can feel it. Yep, I've been. Someone with high EI would be able to read the room, uh -huh. de-escalate the situation, right. and bring everyone back to you know focusing on the task at hand. Wow, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's self-management, right? Yes. But what about understanding the emotions of other people? Is that what people call reading people? That's exactly it. That's social awareness. Okay. It's picking up on those nonverbal cues. Yeah. You know, the tone of voice, body language, mm -hmm. and figuring out what's really going on. Like noticing when someone's feeling overwhelmed. Right. Even if they're not saying it out loud. Exactly. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you're basically like tuning into the emotional undercurrents of the team. Right. But once you've read those signals, how do you actually respond effectively? That's where relationship management comes in. Oh, okay. It's responding in a way that shows that you understand. Yeah. You see them, right. empathize with them. So maybe that's offering support. Maybe it's asking clarifying questions. Right. Or sometimes it's just acknowledging their feelings. Wow, this is really fascinating stuff. Mm. I'm curious, though, where did this whole idea of EI even come from? Like, did someone just wake up one day and say, hey, feelings matter? Well, the term emotional intelligence yeah. was really made popular by Daniel Goleman. Oh, yeah, Goleman. Back in the mid-90s. Mm. But the idea that, you know, intelligence isn't just about IQ right. had been around for a long time before that. Yeah, that makes sense. But Goleman really put it on the map, right? Exactly. And what's really interesting is that he actually argued that EI can be even more important than IQ. Right. When it comes to things like leadership yep. and teamwork, <laughs> especially in a field like agile development, which is all about you know, people. Exactly. People working together. Okay. okay. Let's go back to that courage example for a second. <laughs> okay. Talked about giving feedback. Right. But how else does EI boost that courage in agile teams? Well, think about speaking up. Yeah. In a sprint review. Okay. Even when you know your perspective might be unpopular. Oh, yeah. That's tough. That takes guts, right? For sure. But with high EI, you can voice your concerns constructively, you know, mm -hmm. manage your own fear of rejection right. and present your ideas in a way that actually invites discussion rather than defensiveness. So you're not just like 
blurting things out. No. You're really mm -hmm. being thoughtful about how to frame your message. Exactly. To be both honest and respectful. Yes, you're aware of the impact that your words will have. Right. And you're using that awareness to communicate effectively. Even when it's a tough conversation. Especially when it's a tough conversation. This is really making me rethink how we approach team dynamics. Mm. So, okay, we've established that EI and Agile are like a match made in project management heaven. Right. But let's get practical. How does this all actually play out in a real Agile setting, like day to day? Well, one of the most obvious areas is in team communication. Okay. Think of communication as the lifeblood of any Agile team. Right. It's constant. It's essential. Yeah. And with EI, it just flows smoother. Okay. Tell me more. Tell me more. How does EI impact communication in Agile teams? Well, first of all, when team members have high EI, mm -hmm. they're more likely to be clear communicators, okay. but also active listeners. Yeah. They're less likely to jump to conclusions right. or get defensive if someone challenges their idea. So that means fewer misunderstandings, right. exactly. less yeah. time wasted on those arguments that go nowhere, Yes. and more time spent actually getting things done. Exactly. I like it. And because they can see things from different perspectives. Right. High EI individuals are also much better at handling conflict constructively. Okay. You know, they can empathize with different viewpoints. Yeah. And they can find solutions that work for everybody involved. So imagine like a sprint review where instead uh, of everyone blaming each other, right. the team can openly discuss what went well, what didn't go so well. Exactly. And how to improve for next time. Yes. That's got to be a game changer. Oh, absolutely. And when people feel heard and understood, when those conflicts are addressed fairly, mm. it creates a much more positive and supportive team environment. Yes. Which, of course, has a huge impact on team morale. Of course. Which, in turn, leads to happier team members, better collaboration. <laughs> right. And ultimately, higher productivity. It's a win-win all around. A win-win. Okay. I'm convinced. I'm on board. Good. But let's talk specifics. Okay. What are some of the tangible benefits, the real-world outcomes, mm -hmm. of having high EI in an agile team? Well... The research on this is pretty clear. Teams with high EI see improvements in several key areas. Okay. Things like better conflict resolution, for one, uh -huh. obviously boosted morale, uh -huh. enhanced productivity, and this is a big one. I bet. And perhaps most importantly, they develop greater resilience, which is essential in the world of agile development. Okay. Yeah, resilience is huge. It is. I'm really curious to break each of these benefits down. Yeah. Let's start with conflict resolution. Good. How does EI actually make a difference when conflicts come up? Because they always do. Well, imagine a scrum master who really embodies EI. Huh. They're not just facilitating meetings. They're facilitating understanding. Right. They can help guide those tough conversations, mm -hmm. help the team identify the root cause of the conflict, right. and wow. guide everyone towards a solution that works for everyone's needs. So instead of just letting those conflicts you know, fester and turn into resentment, yeah. they're dealt with head on right? in a way that actually makes the team stronger. That's the goal. That's really powerful. It is. Okay, what about boosting team morale? Well, when team members feel understood right. and appreciated, yeah. their morale naturally goes up. It makes sense. Right. And an emotionally intelligent leader knows how to create that kind of environment. Exactly. They celebrate those achievements. Mm -hmm. They offer constructive feedback. Yes. And they provide genuine support mm -hmm. during those challenging times that, you know, always happen. Always happen. It's not always about the big things, is it? No. It's those small gestures of empathy and understanding mm -hmm. that can make a huge difference for team morale. Yes. Especially during those tough sprints when everyone is feeling the pressure. Absolutely. You know, that reminds me of a time when our project just hit a wall. Oh, yeah. And our team lead, she just took mm -hmm. the time to acknowledge how hard everyone was working. Oh, that's great. Even though we were all totally stressed out. Mm. It sounds so simple, but it made a huge difference. It really does. Sometimes it's not about, you know, making these big speeches. Yeah. It's those quiet, consistent actions exact. that really speak volumes. Yes. Okay, so I'm totally on board with the morale boost. Good. But how does all of this emotional intelligence oh, yes. actually translate into increased productivity mm -hmm. because at the end of the day yeah we've got to deliver we do right oh. we've got deadlines we've got clients and that's where ei really shines actually okay when a team is emotionally intelligent they're better at using everyone's strengths mm -hmm. and assigning tasks accordingly oh i see it's about understanding 
what motivates each person, uh -huh. what their preferred work style is, yeah. and setting them up for success. So you're maximizing individual talent. Yes. While still keeping those big team goals in mind. Exactly. It's like a well-conducted orchestra. I love it. Every instrument has its part. Right. And the result is beautiful music. Yeah, beautiful music. I like it. And speaking of challenges. Yes. Agile teams are constantly having to adapt to change. So mm -hmm. how does EI help them, you know, weather those storms, navigate those choppy waters? Well, I think the key here is that EI gives team members the tools to manage stress, okay. stay motivated, yeah. and bounce back from those setbacks, which are inevitable. Right. So they're less likely to just get overwhelmed mm -hmm. or give up when they hit a roadblock. Right, which happens all the time. All the time. So instead of falling apart under pressure, mm -hmm. they can actually thrive mm -hmm. in that fast-paced, always-changing environment. Exactly. That's pretty incredible. It is. It's about turning those challenges into opportunities to grow, mm. both individually and as a team. But here's the thing, right? What's that? Developing EI within a team, it's not a one-time thing. No. It's a journey, right? That's a journey. It's ongoing. Exactly. It takes time, effort, yeah. and a real commitment to continuous learning. So where do we even begin? Mm -hmm. How do we put all these EI principles into practice in our Agile teams? Where's the starting line for this journey? That's a great question. Yeah. And it's one that we will dive into right. in the next part of our deep dive. Oh, can't wait. So to build a more emotionally intelligent team, okay. I think it really starts with awareness. Okay. The team has to understand what EI is, yeah. why it matters, mm -hmm. and how it can benefit them. So education is like the first step. Exactly. Maybe sharing some articles. Right. Or even having a team discussion dedicated to EI. Exactly. There are tons of resources out there. Right. And just starting the conversation yeah. can get people thinking about it. That makes sense. But okay, once everyone is aware of EI, yeah. how do they actually start you know, right. developing those skills? Well, it's more like developing a muscle. Okay. And I think one of the best workouts is self-reflection. Self-reflection. Encouraging team members to step back. Hmm and examine their own emotions. Okay. You know, their triggers, their strengths, their weaknesses. Right. That can be incredibly insightful. So that's like journaling. Yeah. Or just taking a few minutes at the end of the day. Exactly. To think about how you reacted mm. in certain situations. Yes. And it's not just about identifying the emotion, right? Okay. It's about understanding why you feel that way mm -hmm. and what impact those emotions might have right. on your actions, yeah. on your interactions. I can see how that could be really powerful. It is. But I imagine it takes some practice. It, it does. does. To get to that level of self-awareness where you're really comfortable with it. It takes time. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Right. Exactly. Huh? Like anything else. Okay. So I'm on board with self-reflection. Good. What other tools can we add to our EI toolkit for Agile teams? Active listening. Active listening, okay. It's essential. So that's like yeah. putting down the phone during the meeting, mm -hmm. making eye contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really focusing on what the other person is saying. Exactly. Not just waiting for your turn to talk. And it's not just about the words either. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. What else? Pay attention to the tone of voice, right. body language, mm -hmm. and the emotions behind the message. So what's not being said exactly. is yeah. just as important yeah. as what IS being said. Absolutely. And that reminds me of a time we were having a sprint retrospective. Okay. And one of the team members, he was really quiet. Yeah. And withdrawn. Hmm. And our scrum master, she noticed this. Good. And she just, you know, she asked him, hey, what's going on? Right. And it turned out that he was just feeling completely overwhelmed with his workload. Wow. And just having someone acknowledge that mm -hmm. made a huge difference. I bet. That's a perfect example, right? Yeah. Of how active listening yes. creates that more supportive environment. Absolutely. It can really make someone feel seen and valued. It's so important. Okay, so we've got self-reflection. Right. We've got active listening. Yes. What else can we do to, you know, to boost that EI on agile teams? Leading by example. Oh, leading by example. Okay. That's crucial. If you want your team to embrace EI, yeah. you have to actually model those behaviors yourself. Exactly. Actions speak louder than words. They really do. Especially when it comes to emotional intelligence. So it's not enough to just talk the talk. 
No. You got to walk the walk. You have to walk the walk. Okay. Think about it. As a leader, you set the tone for the whole team. Right. If you're stressed out all the time, yeah. you're reactive, you're dismissive of other people's emotions. Right. That's the culture you're creating. Right. So you're modeling that behavior. Exactly. But if you're calm. Right. If you're approachable. Yeah. If you're genuinely interested in how your team members are feeling. Mm hmm that creates a much more positive and supportive culture. Absolutely. And that's where EI can really flourish. That's where it thrives. Okay, I love that. Good. But even with the best intentions, let's be honest, mm -hmm. things don't always go smoothly. No. Especially in the world of Agile. So how can EI help teams build that resilience right. when those challenges inevitably arise? Well, I think it starts with yeah. creating what we call a psychologically safe environment. Yes. That means people feel comfortable yeah. sharing their struggles, right. admitting when they've made a mistake, mm -hmm. asking for help Yes. without feeling like they're going to be judged. Or punished. Or punished, exactly. Yes. So it's a space where it's okay to say, yeah. hey, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I messed up. Yeah. Without feeling like you're going to get in trouble for it. Exactly. Creating that kind of environment really starts at the top, though, doesn't it? It does. If leaders are open yeah. about their own vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. it gives everyone else permission to do the same. It's like saying, hey, we're all human here. We all make mistakes. Yeah. We all have those bad days. We do. And it's okay to ask for help. Absolutely. And when people feel safe to share their struggles, yeah. it opens the door for collective problem solving. Exactly. Instead of feeling like they're all alone, right? they can lean on their team members for support. Mm -hmm. And that shared sense of responsibility yeah. can be so empowering. It is. It's like saying, you know, we're all in this together mm -hmm. and we're going to figure this out as a team. Right. And that's really the essence of resilience, isn't it? It's the uh -huh. ability to bounce back. Yeah. Learn from those mistakes uh -huh. and come out stronger. Yeah. But resilience isn't just about bouncing back, though, is it? Right. What it's I also about that? preventing that burnout. Okay. Yeah. Burnout is huge. In the first place. So how can EI contribute to, you know, yeah. a more sustainable pace for agile teams? Well, Emotionally intelligent leaders, hmm. they're attuned to the signs of burnout. Okay. What are some of those signs? Things like fatigue, irritability, Ritual. withdrawal, mm -hmm. decreased productivity. Okay. They know how to intervene before it becomes a big problem. So maybe that means encouraging team members to take breaks. Yes. Offering more flexible work arrangements. Exactly. Or just checking in regularly to see how they're doing. Yes. And not just about the work. Right. But about how they're actually feeling. Absolutely. It's about creating that culture of self-care. Yes. Where people feel like it's okay yeah. to take care of their mental health, mm -hmm. their emotional well-being. Exactly. Because let's be real, when people are feeling rested yes. and recharged, uh -huh. they're much more equipped to handle those inevitable ups and downs yeah. of agile development. For sure. They've got that reserve right. of Re energy, um, yeah. of resilience. And exactly. If we tap into. And it's not just about preventing the negative, right? Okay, so what else is it about? It's also about celebrating the positive. Okay. Taking the time to acknowledge those accomplishments, right. big or small, yeah. can go a long way in boosting morale yeah. and preventing burnout. So it's not just about putting out fires all the time. No. It's also about celebrating the wins. Yes. Acknowledging the progress that the team is making. Absolutely. It's about creating that positive feedback loop right. where people feel appreciated mm. and motivated to keep pushing forward. Yeah, even when things get tough. Even when things get tough. This is all making so much sense. Yeah. We've talked a lot about how EI benefits individuals. Right. How it benefits teams. Yeah. But what about the impact on, you know, right. the overall project, mm -hmm. maybe even the entire organization? Yeah. How does EI contribute to those tangible results? That is a great question. And that's actually what we're going to explore we are. in the final part yes. of our deep dive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have established that EI is like this superpower for agile teams. Right. It helps with communication, resilience, morale. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on. It does. But let's talk bottom line. Okay. How does all this emotional intelligence actually translate into results? Like, you know, right. getting things done. Well, that's where you really start to see the magic of EI. Okay. Because when teams are emotionally intelligent, mm -hmm. they're not just working together. Right. They're collaborating. Oh, that's a good distinction. It is. Collaboration is at the heart of Agile. 
right? Absolutely. It's about working together effectively, mm -hmm. sharing ideas, solving problems as a team. And EI really takes that collaboration to the next level. Okay, I'm listening. Think about it. When team members trust each other, yeah. when they feel safe to speak up, to share different perspectives, uh -huh. when they can handle conflict in a constructive way, right. that's when the real innovation happens. It's like those brainstorming sessions yeah. where everyone's just bouncing ideas off of each other, yeah. building on each other's thoughts. Right. And suddenly you come up with this amazing solution that no one person could have thought of on their own. Exactly. That's the power of a high EI team. Right. It's not just a bunch of individuals. Right. It's a cohesive unit, a force multiplier. I like that. But collaboration isn't just about warm fuzzies, right? No, of course not. It has to lead to results. It does. And that's where we see the connection between EI and productivity. Okay. Because when teams are emotionally intelligent, right. they're more efficient. Yeah. They're more focused. Okay. And they're more motivated to get things done. So that means fewer distractions. Right. Less time wasted on drama. Exactly. And more energy focused on actually achieving those sprint goals. Absolutely. I can get behind that. And don't forget, high EI also means better stress management. Oh yeah, that's huge. When team members can handle the pressure, mm. they're less likely to burn out. Right, burnout is a real problem. It is. So it's about creating a pace yeah. that the team can sustain. And that's where the link between EI and trust is so important. Okay, tell me more about that. When team members trust each other, mm -hmm. They're more willing to take risks, to experiment, to try new things. Because they know that even if they fail, yeah. they'll be supported, not blamed. Exactly. There's that psychological safety net that we talked about. That sense of safety is crucial for innovation and creativity. It makes sense. It lets teams push those boundaries right. and come up with really groundbreaking solutions. So EI is not just about making people feel good. No. It's about creating an environment yes. where they can do their best work. Exactly. It's about empowering people mm. to reach their full potential. This has been a really amazing deep dive. It has. We've covered so much from what EI actually is mm -hmm. to how it impacts agile teams in the real world. Yeah. Before we wrap up, though, I want to make sure yeah. our listener is walking away with you know, some, right. some key takeaways. Yes. What are the most important things to remember? What are those nuggets of wisdom? Well, first of all, EI is not a soft skill. Okay. It's a critical success factor. It's not just about being nice. So, it's about being smart. Yes. About how you manage emotions. Absolutely. And remember, yeah. it's a journey. It is. Not a destination. It takes time and effort. It does. To develop these skills. But it's a journey worth taking. Oh, absolutely. The benefits of high EI are Undeniable, right? Oh, yeah. Increased productivity, mm. greater job satisfaction. Yes. A more positive work environment. It's a win-win. It really is a win-win for everyone. And one last thing to remember. Okay, what's that? EI is everyone's responsibility. Oh, that's a good point. It's not just up to the leaders right. or scrum master. Everyone on the team plays a role. Everyone. So to our listener out there, whether you're a developer, a tester, a product owner. Anyone you can start making a difference today. Maybe it's practicing active listening. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's offering support to a teammate who's struggling. Yeah. Or maybe it's just being more mindful of your own emotions. Right. And how they impact those around you. Every step you take makes a difference. It does. Towards a more emotionally intelligent. And a more successful. And ultimately. Agile team. Absolutely. So here's a thought to leave you with. What if your team could achieve more with less burnout? just by tapping into the power of EI. Something to think about as you continue on your Agile journey.